To be black in America is you're born with the weight of generations before you on your shoulder and to keep fighting a battle that, a war that's still going on for our, our own dignity, it feels like. Not understanding how to deal with that pain, knowing that the world sees you as other and different. I, I truly think Americans in general, white, black, purple, color, doesn't matter. I, I think they need to acknowledge that racism are real, is real and stop denying it. Like it's 2020, just, just go ahead and accept it that there are racists. There are racists in your family, there are racists that you work with, there, there are racists ruling the country. That's a huge, that would be a huge thing because overall, like there's a whole umbrella thing, like racism's not here. So I feel like if we could get on a collective agreement that racism is a real thing, then we could actually move forward to fixing the racism. Um, too many people are still in denial. Growing up black in America, I absolutely had to have a, uh, a black talk with my parents. I didn't, um, a sex talk was basically secondary. Uh, and the, the black talk was, if I was to get pulled over by a, a police officer or any law enforcement authority figure, how I needed to interact with that person in order to come home safely. It was like my second year at UNCW. We had uh, came home for Christmas break. I was in Greensboro and we was, um, I went to go chill at my homeboy crib. And we leave and come home, it's snowing. They stop us miles away from where we were. We almost at home. They stop us on uh, High Point Road, what's now Gate City Boulevard, pull us out the car, sit us on the sidewalk or on the curb for two hours in the snow. Seven, eight police cars come up, dogs, all that. They tell us we doing this, we doing that. They search the car, they, everything. They, the whole nine. We got pulled over for a, um, a crooked license plate tag. Yep, and the reason I know that we got pulled over for what uh, a, a crooked license plate tag is one of the guys pulled up, one of the, I think the last cop pulled up and he was like, oh, every cop that pulled up verified our ID. Every one of them, every new cop came up and looked at our IDs. So the, one of the, I think the last cop was like, oh, UNCW, huh? And I was like, yeah, he was like, Seahawk. I was like, yep, I was a Seahawk. So, since we being chatty, can you tell me why we, why we out here in the curb? It's snowing and I would like to get home. My mom is probably worried about me. I'm on Christmas break and you got me out here on the curb, bro. Like, what are y'all doing? We don't have nothing on us. So and he was like, oh, well, you know, I think he said your license, I think he said your license plate was crooked. But now I have to remember that these cops don't see me as a mixed girl. They don't see me as a cop's daughter. They don't see me as a theater curator. Like they literally see me as a black woman leading a protest. That's all I am right now. I'm learning to try and deal with things. But you know, I can't compartmentalize things. I have to give it the appropriate amount of time. feel those feelings because those feelings are real. The pain is real. And I can't be afraid of it. I can't be ashamed of it. And I have to tell myself that I can't be ashamed of the color of my skin. <laughs> because being black is the favorite part of me. That's my favorite part of my existence. Like, it's just, I'm black man. I'm a black man and I love that. Why can't everybody else love that I'm a black man? Why can't other people love black men? Why do, why do we, why is it across the world people that look like me hurt most everywhere and put down